Hey what's up guys welcome back to another video and today we're going to look at some of the most mean-spirited death traps in movies. The Counselor. Look I'm going to level with you guys the only reason I made this video was to talk about this scene because it's just beyond diabolical. I recently watched The Counselor and there are quite a few scenes that are done exceptionally well. This is not even a horror movie but it still has one of the most disturbing death traps that I've ever seen. Here we follow a group of people all involved in a specific drug trade. The protagonist is a lawyer who's only ever referred to as counselor. He's doing this for the first time to make some quick cash but very quickly everything goes wrong. The drugs get stolen and he's being blamed for it. Fairly early on in the movie we're told about a disturbing machine called the Bolito. I'm not going to lie, the first time I heard this, I thought they said burrito. Try the new $2 cheesy double beef burritos now at Taco Bell. Nope, the Bolito is not that pleasant. Well, I mean, neither is Taco Bell, but that's beside the point. It consists of a thin wire that goes around your neck like a noose. There's a small motor attached to it, which very slowly tightens the loop. Most people would probably think that you'll die of strangulation, but it's far worse than that. But then about a minute, this thing will begin slicing through your throat. Eventually, towards the end, one of the middlemen in this drug deal, Westray, gets this thing put on him in a jaw-dropping scene. He tries maybe snapping the wire with his hand, but it doesn't work. Much like the wire tightening, the tension in the scene just continuously ratchets up. Eventually it's so tight that it cuts into his neck, which leads to blood spraying out six feet onto the sidewalk. Completely insane. All the bystanders watch in shock, except for this guy who just looks mildly annoyed, and then Westray's hand, which he used to try to stop the wire, falls down with the fingertips cut off. Luckily, this machine is completely fictional and was only thought of for this story. The Collector This movie is like if Jigsaw took steroids. In The Collector, we follow a thief who just wants to steal a jewel from a safe, fair and square. But then he becomes stuck in a house with, I swear it's like 300 traps. Every room is rigged with some insane shit. I've never seen anything like it. I struggled with picking which trap I should focus on for this video because they're all nuts. I mean, The Collector, who is the killer in this movie, he breaks into your house and then spends presumably eight and a half weeks setting up all this stuff after which he sends you on a chase through your own house where you will be tortured by all the death traps. I mean there are razor blades on the windows, some acidic glue, there's a room with two dozen bear traps, it's just crazy. But probably the most mean-spirited setup is the room with the fish hooks hanging from the ceiling. This is one of those scenes that are pretty painful to watch because you can just feel the sting. When Arkin, the thief, breaks into the house and gets chased by the collector, he eventually runs into the bathroom, which is full of fish hooks which are hanging from the ceiling with some fishing line, I assume. Of course, he gets caught in some of them and they poke into his skin. I have to say that this room could have been far worse for the main character. If I were in there, I would walk in one of them, freak out, and then fall over getting cut by 20 more. Maybe it's because this trap worked so well, but after Arkin is knocked out by the killer, he wakes up in the basement with, you guessed it, even more hooks on his body. This pick really includes all the fish hook stuff. If he moves, it causes him to be cut. At this point, the collector doesn't care anymore and just begins slicing right into his forehead. And Arkin can't move because if he would, it would cause all the hooks to cut him. Cube. Whereas The Collector seems like it was inspired by Saw, Cube actually came quite a few years before it. It's about a giant cube filled with death traps. Throughout the movie we follow a small group of people who all wake up here and slowly figure out that they are meant to go through the traps and beat the puzzles. But the very beginning probably shows best just how evil this place is. A man wakes up in this mysterious prison type place and it's dead silence. The walls have an unusual design on them and it's clear that this guy has no idea where he is. He opens one of the doors heading into a different room that doesn't look any better. He waits for a few seconds, unsure of how to proceed. There's no visible threat, so he starts walking. Only a few steps in and we hear a loud mechanical slicing sound. 
Slowly we see that he starts bleeding, and before we know what even really happened, he falls apart into a bunch of meat cubes. There are so many aspects of this which I find awful, besides the dying of course. This place is so endlessly depressing. It reminds me of a torture method called white torture, where you just stick someone in a white room and over time they will slowly go insane. Also, the mysterious nature of this place makes the death even more shocking. Of course, there are ways to beat it, but honestly, I wouldn't have done any better. When the guy wakes up, there's no visible threat that indicates that he's about to die. I mean, at least in the Saw movies, it's very clear what you're in for. I mean, it's even explained to you. Here, it just comes out of nowhere. Maybe that makes it a little bit better because there's no prolonged suffering. I mean, in a split second, it's over for this guy. Saw 3D. Since I mentioned Saw in the last pick, this is something which I had gladly forgotten about until one of you guys brought it up in a comment in one of the previous videos. Saw 3D has a protagonist who was just asking to be put in a death game. Bobby lies about having survived a jigsaw trap to sell his stupid book, and he does this while he's in the same city as the still active killer. I mean, at that point, you might as well just go to John Kramer and volunteer to test out his latest arts and crafts project. Funnily enough, Bobby's test actually seems to be the easiest at first. There's another awful one later on, but the first trap he has to survive is evading some hastily plopped down spikes. But it's all of his friends who are in far worse positions. It's not because their traps are more difficult, but because they're freaking impossible, like the silent circle. And hey, this one also involves a fish hawk. The Silent Circle is already the second trap in the movie and involves Nina, Bobby's publicist. How did this one go again? Oh yeah, Nina is rewarded for her silence and Bobby has one minute to pull out the key attached to a fish hook in her throat using the string. There are spikes which slowly drive into her neck and if she screams, they move faster. Of course, the fish hook gets caught in her throat and Bobby must violently yank it out. Obviously, once it gets bloody, she begins screaming. I mean, how could you expect her not to? Jigsaw makes this sound like a goofy game on Silent Library. 127 hours. This is the only pick on this list that isn't man-made. It took me a really long time to watch 127 hours, as in I only watched it last week because this movie has that one scene that's just too much. 127 hours is the true story of Aaron Ralston who goes climbing through a Utah canyon. All goes well until he gets trapped when a giant rock falls on his arm. There's the canyon, then his arm, and then the big rock. Aaron is completely stuck and can't move at all. He struggles for a long time and tries a few different things, such as chipping away at the boulder with his pocket knife. But it slowly dawns on us that none of this will work and there's only one way out of here. In one insane scene, Aaron just loses all f**ks to give and purposefully breaks his arm in a few different spots. Then he flips open his leather man and begins cutting away. The most painful part is when he comes across a small white sliver, a large nerve running through his arm. Yeah, and he cuts it. Ugh, I can't. Guys, if you have trouble watching the Saw movies, skip this scene. Like I said, it's still painful for me to watch. Don't get me wrong, I think it's done really well, especially the part with the nerve, it was incredibly effective. I can watch Saw 1 through 42 no problem, because a lot of the time the traps are so over the top that my brain writes it off as it being just a movie. But this scene feels shockingly real. Also in the back of your head, there's always that thought of, this actually happened, and it makes it so much worse. It's probably the longest five minutes you'll ever sit through. However, there is also a good message here about never giving up and the power of the human survival instinct, which is really inspiring. Hostel 3. This movie is less inspiring. The first Hostel was surprisingly good and was sort of a cautionary tale that shows what can happen when you chase things that sound too good to be true. Then part two came out and it had very little to do with the first one and added a bunch of stuff that wasn't in the original. Then the third one came out and while it's still entertaining to watch, 
It feels like it was a completely different movie, and then at the very end, somebody accidentally labeled it Hostel 3. But there's one scene in it that I've never forgotten about. Very quick for context, this was one of the first horror films I ever watched. I don't remember the true first one, but it was either Saw 6, Hostel 3, or Silent Hill. And I was like 10 or 11 at the time. The first two entries take place in Slovakia, but Hostel 3 switches the location to Las Vegas, and it's about a group of guys who are celebrating a bachelor party party, and it's the typical setup. They're in Las Vegas, there's hot girls, gambling, and chainsaws. In one scene, Mike is brought to a makeshift operating room, and we can see all the super rich people watching through a glass window. And I can't get over the fact that on one of their computers we can see the GTA font. Then a guy in doctor's attire enters and prepares the young man for what's about to happen next. He marks his face with a marker. Dude, he marks his face with a marker. Get the he marks his face with a sharpie around the eyes and the mouth, after which he picks up a sharp scalpel. Then he begins cutting and eventually peels off his entire face. This scene happens quite quickly, but at the end we see him place the mask on a plastic head and it looks Unforgettable. Scream Season 1. This pick is not actually a movie, but a series, and it's a show that I think was always very underappreciated, which is kind of a bummer because now it's cancelled. It's the Scream TV series. Not only did this have an awesome soundtrack, but the Lakewood Slasher, which is sort of like the alternative to Ghostface in the Scream movies, sets up quite a few mean-spirited traps. We follow a group of high schoolers who are being stalked and taunted by the murderer. And it's an MTV show, so of course we will have that element of relationships and who's dating who and this guy steals the other dude's girlfriend and all that kind of stuff. But it also gets really bloody quite often. The main girl, Emma Duval, has a boyfriend, Will. At one point in the show, he gets kidnapped and Emma gets a call from the killer explaining the situation. When she asks him what he did to Will, he responds with, uh, It's what you're gonna do, that's the real bitch. I suggest you run. Eventually, Emma sees him with his mouth duct taped in a field in front of a agricultural machine with what looks like a giant chainsaw. When Emma runs towards him, she accidentally activates a tripwire. This leads to the saw being lowered and Will being absolutely destroyed. <laughs> One reason for why this is so evil is because Emma thinks that the game is over at this point. She basically did everything that the killer wanted her to, yet he still continues to torment her. This is one of those scenes that highlights the relentless nature of the Lakewood Slasher. Anyway, those were some of the most evil death traps. As always, I hope you liked it. If you did, smash like, smash subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.